or throughout the eight-day hearing while doctors argued over whether or not he was suffering from Alzheimer's disease. As the jury returned its verdict, he sat staring straight at them before turning to his lawyer to ask what they'd said. Before sending out the jury, the judge, Mr Justice Potts, told them it was up to the defence to prove Serafinovich was unfit to stand trial. He said the jury must satisfy themselves that he was unable to understand the allegations, to instruct his solicitors or to give evidence in his own defence. It was in German-occupied Belarusia that the prosecution alleged Serafinovich took part in the massacre of thousands of Jews. Many of the killings were said to have taken place in the town of Mir, while Serafinovich was head of the local police force. The chief prosecution witness, who gave evidence at an earlier hearing, said today the Crown had no choice but to abandon the case. You cannot accuse somebody if he's not fit to answer, to remember. His lawyer said Serafinovich had wanted the case to go ahead. He wanted a trial because he was confident, and so were we, that we would have been able to prove him innocent. Cases against five other alleged war criminals are still being considered. There must now be doubts over whether they'll proceed. Harry Smith, ITN, at the Old Bailey. The electrical retail group Comet announced today that it's to shed 1,200 jobs. They'll be lost when it shuts more than 50 of its shops following its takeover of the Norweb chain in the autumn. Andrew Simmons reports. The mass redundancies come in a major shake-up of the Comet group. It's what the company describes as a move to capitalise on the fast-growing UK market in electrical goods. Comet had bought the northwest-based Norweb electricity showrooms in a £29 million deal last year. In March, all of their high street stores will be closed. The majority of the 1,200 job losses will be of Norweb staff. Comet will close 26 of its own stores in the shake-up. The company will concentrate exclusively on out-of-town stores, abandoning the high street completely. And in an investment deal, it will pour £22 million into restructuring. It's caused a furious union reaction. A spokesman for Usdor, the shop workers' union, said the job losses were all the more deplorable when the economy is said to be booming. Andrew Simmons, ITN. The American balloonist Steve Fawcett is losing height tonight to fly round Libya after Colonel Gaddafi refused him permission to enter Libyan airspace. It could mean he'll have to abandon his round-the-world attempt. He's already broken the record for staying in the air. Terry Lloyd has exclusive coverage. The American balloonist had just crossed the Atlantic and was still flying high as he passed the spot where Richard Branson was forced to ditch in the Sahara Desert. More conventional aircraft, given permission to overfly Algeria, were on the lookout for the solo millionaire adventurer. You've got a balloon down here, down there. You can see it, it's about 20 degrees to the left of the nose and uh, at about 20,000 feet below. So we're at the balloon's pilot, Steve Fawcett, then broke through to our plane on VHF radio. That is a firm, November 311, Delta Golf. Are... Alone in his tiny cramped gondola, he was looking for friends. When I spoke to him, he explained that the cold had been his worst enemy so far. I think perhaps the uh, most serious problem is that the uh, fuel consumption is higher than anticipated. And uh, also we've been uh, having a hard time keeping the uh, heaters going uh, at night at high altitude. So it gets uh, very cold in here at night. Fawcett set off as the underdog in the race around the world, pitting his modest balloon against two other multi-million pound projects. On paper, Steve Fawcett had no right to take part in the same challenge as Richard Branson and the other high-tech Breitling team, hence the David and Goliath comparisons. But it's the underdog with his basic technology and simple flight plan who's still going strong. Fawcett says it would be a miracle to go all the way around the world, and tonight he must make the decision whether to ditch himself. He's been blown towards Libya, but Colonel Gaddafi's regime has refused him permission to fly over. Terry Lloyd, ITN, above the Sahara Desert. Air travel of a different kind, an American unmanned rocket carrying a multi-million dollar satellite had a perfect launch to begin with. Three, two, one. Zero, we have ignition and liftoff from Cape Canaveral Air Station of the Air Force Delta II launch vehicle carrying the new GPS-2R satellite. Oh. We have had an anomaly. We uh, just had an anomaly of the Delta II launch vehicle from Cape Canaveral Air Station. It's not known what caused the anomaly.